Are we launched? Okay. Yeah. Howdy, everybody. We're live on Facebook. Did y'all know that? Y'all supposed to say yes. Yay. There you go. That that helps so that it's Yay. not just us up here. You know, if y'all can interact with this until we get started. We try to time this music, you know, so that it's done at the five-minute mark, and y'all know how successful that's usually not. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, and Sam just looked over and he said we forgot to time that first song and I'm like well it's probably about a four minute song what do y'all what is, sis Mike Greg y'all think that first song's about four minutes we're gonna vote about four okay so uh about two and a half we go if if it gets to the end and we sing the last chorus 15 times y'all, that's why that's why that's happening because we're watching the time so we, uh we're gonna start at the four minute marker y'all uh y'all re- Sam you ready all right Y'all know this song. Why don't y'all stand up? Let's get our juices flowing this morning. Come on. So with all your mind, with all your strength, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Fifteen. What do y'all think? 
We were right on time, Patrick. Isn't that amazing? All right. We're so glad that you have joined us this morning, that you've joined us online, that you've joined us here in the space. We've got Barbara Farmer in the house today, so everybody gets excited about that. Um, Barbara, any announcements that you know of this morning you want to come and tell us? exciting things going on in our congregation this Saturday we have a mission team that will be flying out to Belize it's our second year in a row to go to Belize and and serve down there with with our neighbors to the south but we have some needs we have need of suitcases if you have any old suitcases that you would be willing to donate we have school supplies and other other supplies that we need to pack and take and we will not bring, be bringing those suitcases back. So if you have any old ones laying around that you would just like to get rid of, please, please, please let me know or just call the church office and we can either arrange to pick them up or you can, you can bring them. I would ask you to pray for us as we, as we go. We have um, 19 or 20 uh, young adults, uh, adults and, and youth that will be uh, going on this mission trip. And it's for me, it was a life changer last year. Also, in August, the first full week in August, we have a group of 55, I think, 55 or 56 youth and their leaders coming from, from Michigan, um, Colorado, South Dakota, and Iowa to spend a week with us at Pleasant View. We will house them and feed them there, and then we will send them out into the community for work projects so those work projects have already been planned but again we need your help we we need your help particularly on Sunday night and Thursday in feeding these guys Sunday uh, Saturday night excuse me they, they arrive on Saturday and we want to give them a fair of southern cooking I'm gonna make a pot of pinto beans so if if you have a favorite southern dish that you would like to contribute please also, let me know about that. We want, we want to give these, these northern children and leaders just a taste of what the South tastes like. And Vicki, I think that's all I can think of. Well, that sounds like some good stuff, Miss Barbara. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, that's just awesome. Great opportunities to be the hands and feet here and across the world. And uh, I feel sure somebody's got some old suitcase sitting at their house. I think we got a couple, don't we, Greg, <laughs> that we can get rid of. So, uh, or, you know, there's probably a yard sale somewhere this week. You can pick up one for a couple bucks. <laughs> right? All right, y'all sing with us. This is the new song this morning. Justin's going to lead it. But it's a really cool song, so I'm going to encourage you to just clap with us and sing with us this morning. The wonder of how you brought Delivering the exodus of my heart You found, you freed Held back the waters for my release Oh Yahweh Cause you're the God who fights for me Lord of every victory Hallelujah, hallelujah. And you have torn apart the sea. And you have led me through the deep. Hallelujah, hallelujah. A cloud by day. Is a sign that you are with me. The fire by night is the guiding light to my feet. Cause you found you free, held back the waters for my release. Oh Yahweh, cause you're the God who fights for me, Lord of every victory. Hallelujah. 
You have torn apart the sea. You have led me through the deep. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're the God who fights for me. Lord of every victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have torn apart the sea. You have led me through the deep. Hallelujah. every day we call him the good shepherd for a reason and there's songs out there that talks about how he leads one he'll go after the one and he will fight for the one because there's never somebody so lost that can't find Jesus so we're just going to pray for those out there this morning that are looking for things in the wrong places or looking for hope in wrong places or that they're just struggling. They're just struggling to get out of the dark. And there's that little glimmer of light that's in, that's in the distance, and they're reaching out for it. So if you know somebody like that, come along beside them. Give them a, a little extra light, a little extra kindness. Just love on them. Because that's what he calls us to do. He didn't die on that cross for nothing. He truly came down. He truly came down to love each and every one of us where we are in our awful, awful ways. He still loves us. So if you guys have any prayer requests this morning, Barbara's here. If you want to put them on the cross, we certainly encourage you to do that. If, if you want to put them publicly on the Facebook feed, we encourage you to do that. Um, that's what we're here for, to share our burdens and to lift our praises up this morning. i 
Lord, thank you so much. Thank you so very much for your grace, for your grace that covers me. Lord, I'm so grateful that in my humbleness, for every time I mess up, that you're there in the darkness, you're there in the midst, and you pick me up, and you dust me off, and you say, get back to work. Lord, thank you for the privilege to serve with you. Lord, thank you for the privilege to be your child. And Lord, thank you for Jesus. And Lord, this morning, we just want to lift up Wesley and Susan. And we know that you are there, and you are there with Wesley, and he can feel your mighty presence. And Lord, we know Susan can feel your mighty presence. So we just want to lift them up especially to you this morning. And Lord, we want to lift up our team that's going to Belize to be your hands and feet. And for our church family that's going to be serving a, a group to come in and serve this community that we can that we get the privilege to be your hands and feet. Lord, thank you for that. Because even when it's tough, even when the weather's hot and there's rain and all those things, you give us the strength, you give us the perseverance to go out and do your work. Lord, thank you for that. Lord, we just lift up so many things to you this morning that you know what's on our hearts and minds. Financial st struggles right now, emotional struggles, physical struggles. Lord, we know that you're there. So Lord, just help us to be your hands and feet in those situations as well when you call us to go, that we can be your light in this world. Lord, thank you for this time together. Thank you for the words that you put on Barbara's heart this morning. 
Lord, I just pray that for each of us that hear it this morning or that will hear it through the week, through the blessing of the internet that spreads good news, that someone will hear the word, that they'll be a little bolder and a little stronger and have a little more hope that there is a better, better promise on this earth. And it's with you in heaven, Lord. So thank you for that. Thank you for this time together. Thank you for Jesus. And it's in his mighty, mighty name that we ask all these things. Amen. morning again and for those of you that maybe I haven't met um, haven't introduced myself at least five times too and uh, we'll do it one more time my name is Barbara Farmer and it's my privilege to occupy the second chair at Pleasant View uh, along with Dan Gray as we are uh, um, classified as associate pastors so i did not get here in time to tell Vicki of um, a prayer concern that I received in the middle of the night last night, and I would like to pass it along to you, and that's Ian Dew. He's one of our young men at Pleasant View. He's, uh, a, he and, uh, and Justin share the technology uh, gene. Ian uh, is, is a brilliant young man, and uh, he will be having... Um, I guess it's reconstruction surgery. He had surgery a, a while back. He's deaf in one ear and has had surgery several times to to um, drain, you know, create drainage in, in that ear, drain the, the fluid from his brain stem. But he will be going to Duke on Friday for more surgery yet. And he emailed me and, and said, please ask people to, to be praying. So do pray. And also I'd like for us to, to lift up our brother uh, Anders Olson who is on the Appalachian Trail even as we speak making that trek and this boy's going to make it he's going to make it from Georgia to Maine so pray for those if you would please With, and let, let's just pray pray right now I don't think we can ever get too much prayer so pray with me Father I thank you so much for the privilege of standing before the, these your, your people and, and those who might be watching on Facebook I pray your, your presence with us, Father, and your peace for your knowledge and your, your, um, your wisdom to, to flow through us. When I open my mouth, Father, I pray that whatever words come out of it would be translated between the speaking of my voice and the hearing of the, of the ears of those who are tuned in or present, that the words that would be heard would be the words that the Holy Spirit intends to be heard. So stand before me, Father, and, and hide me behind the cross. In the mighty, powerful name of Jesus, amen. I would like to ask if you would stand with me as I read the scripture this morning. I'm reading from the 10th chapter of the Gospel of Luke, verses 25 through 37. And standing in in the hearing of the scripture being read is just a, a reverence that we have for the word of God. So hear the word. One day, an expert in religious law stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question. Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus replied, what does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? The man answered, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Right, Jesus told him. Do this, and you will live. The man wanted to justify his actions, so he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied with a story. 
a Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho and was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes and beat him and left him half dead beside the road. By chance, a priest came along. But when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. A temple assistant walked over and looked at him lying there, but he also passed by on the other side. Then a despised Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, Take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you the next time I'm here. Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by bandits? Jesus asked. The man replied, The one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, Yes. Now go and do the same. This, my friends, is the word of God for the people of God, and we say together, thanks be to God. Thank you. You may be seated. And I hear music. That's wonderful. <laughs> you know, when we were transforming this room in, into what we have here today, I came here every day, and I watched as those men and women who, who volunteered to come here and be the hands and feet of, of Jesus and the, the, the back and, and the sweat and uh, just make this room what it is today. And as, as I came and sat at a table spread lengthwise across this room and talked with those fellas, many of you were here, I, I thought, I wonder what it would be like to stand up there. And uh, that, that, was, that was a dream that I secretly had, was someday to be able to stand up here and talk to you. Well, this is the day, and I appreciate the opportunity. I know Dan is fulfilling a, a dream that he's had for a long time in being in Israel right now and, and working on an archaeological dig. And he actually sent pictures. I'm sure many of you saw those of where he is actually working right now. So we pray for Dan and for his joy in, in being there. And according to the day, today's scripture, Jesus uh, continues his practice of teaching in parables. And we know that that was, that was what he did, that Jesus taught in parables. And two of the best known, two of the most famous to the most popular of Jesus parables are found in Luke the first one of those is I say the first the from chapter 15 we find the the parable or the or the story of the prodigal son uh, the older brother the the loving father but known to us as the, the, the parable of the prodigal son and then today's story about the good Samaritan two of the most popular stories that Jesus told. The Good Samaritan, where a religious expert asked Jesus what he thought was going to be a trick question. This young man, I, I think of him as young, young and cocky maybe, a young lawyer. When he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? You know, he stood up and he, he uh, confronted Jesus trying desperately to trap him to trick him, to, to, to get him to say something that they could use to a attack him with the intent in mind of eventually just ridding the world of this man. Billy Graham says, Jesus was asked this same question in various forms at least 19 times in the Gospels. What must I do to inherit eternal life? And the answer is the same over and over. It hasn't changed at all. His answer then was the answer that, it, that is still true today. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. 
and like lawyers are warned never to do, Teresa, I'm sure you would you would tell us this, uh, that a good lawyer knows never to ask a question that you're not sure you know the answer to. This young man defied that principle. He asked a question, a further question, that he really didn't know the answer to. And he said, okay, and just who is my neighbor? That was a cocky response, just who is my neighbor? And Jesus proceeded to tell him the story of the, of the Samaritan, a, a hated Samaritan. The story is, is explicit. In, I mean, when Jesus tells it, he said a Jew was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho. And a Samaritan was the only one of the three passing by who had compassion on him. A Samaritan, maybe just some dude on his way to Jericho, maybe he was going down to vacation at the Dead Sea, maybe he was relocating and sold his property and had all, all the money he had with him. Who knows? We, we don't know that part of the story. We just know that he was a Samaritan, and we know that the man who had been beat up and left for dead was a Jew rivalry there the Jews hated each other the Jews hated the Samaritans the Samaritans hated Jews they hated each other there's a biblical scholar by the name of Kenneth Bailey who paints a, paints a very vivid picture of what it might have meant for the good Samaritan to take the, the, the man on his own donkey and put him up in an inn and take care of him if if we looked at it in, in a um, more modern term, there's, um, there's an unwritten shock in the parable of Jesus, a shock only heard by people living in the context of his story. Those who were most shocked by this story were the Jews who hated the Samaritans. But what if we change the location and change the characters and uh, it, today, we might have a better sense of how truly shocking this story is if we, if we, instead of the Samaritans and the Jews, what about we have on the Western Plains, say, in uh, 1875, back when Cowboys and Indians, y'all grew up, I grew up in that era where we played Cowboys and Indians, that would not be politically correct today. We, we could not talk about um, cowboys and Indians, but I'm going to anyway. Just say that back in 1875, walking into Dodge City with a scalped cowboy slung over his horse and checking into the room was a young Indian brave. And what if he stayed the night to take care of this scalped cowboy? Any Indian, any Indian so brave would be fortunate to get out of the city of light get out of town alive even if he had saved the cowboy's life that would be a modern analogy of the good Samaritan and the Jew laying on the side of the road almost dead so this man we've come to know as the good Samaritan would himself have been on a dangerous journey you know this this was a very dangerous stretch of road and even today um it's, it's a, it would be a very dangerous stretch of road to try to traverse. The road from Jerusalem to Jericho now is a modern highway. I've, I've been on that highway, and even so, it's, it's a, very, a very steep grade where you're going from, um, I'm thinking um, uh, Jerusalem is, is about 2,800 feet above sea level, and the traveling down to Jericho at the Dead Sea is about 1,400 feet in today below sea level. So uh, it's, it's 4,000 drop in elevation. So Jerusalem would be uh, 2,600 elevation and, um, and, and Jericho at the Dead Sea, 1,400 below sea level. So it, it was quite a dangerous journey. The, the level of the sea, it continues to drop. This the level is lower even today. When I when I checked before when I was at home, checked the current level of the Dead Sea. It's fourteen hundred ten point eight feet below sea level. 
they're continually dredging the salt out uh, for commercial purposes. So the, the level of the Dead Sea continues to drop, and it's still a dangerous journey. If you look, on, if you stand on, on, the, on the high, I, it, uh, the high, I call it a mountain. It's it's on the very high hill, and look down into what is known as the the valley of the valley of the shadow of death. And you can look over to the left and see the old road, the old uh, Jericho road, as it wound down through all the way down into that valley, an extremely dangerous place, where robbers could easily hide and attack those traveling by. It was it was a it was uh, just a, a death trap in a lot of situations, and it was it was a dangerous thing, a dangerous trip to make, and it still is. And I ask God, here in the 21st century, just like that that young attorney had had done to over 2,000 years ago, when he looked at Jesus and said, "Who is my neighbor?" And I have asked God, Lord, here in the 21st century. Who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? And friends, I'm going to ask you to think about the same thing today. Who is your neighbor? Who exactly is your neighbor? And when we take youth on mission trips, um, we were in Johns Island, South Carolina, just a couple of weeks ago. This, it's been a busy, busy, busy summer for the youth program at Pleasant View. But on, on Johns Island, at 1030 every night, Justin was there. We, we would gather as a group out on the, out on the uh, deck, out on the pier overlooking the, the Bohicket River, and HB would ask, think about it, where did you see God today? And to me, that's, that's the same question that I, I ask when I say, who is my neighbor? Where did you see God today? Who is your neighbor? The children are asked that. And then after a period of reflection, they talk about where they had seen God that day. They talked about who had been their neighbor that day. I came here another time this last week. The room was empty. There were no workmen here. The work's completed. The, the place is, looks really good compared to the old Hallmark building that, that we came into a few months ago when this whole journey toward Pleasant View Horizons worship became reality. But I, I came here one day this past week by myself. I just wanted to get away from, from all that was going on at the church, just, just come away to a quiet place, and this was a quiet place. So I unlocked the door, and I came in, and I was just here by myself, and I was, I was praying. I stood in this place. I went back to the soundboard, and actually took the cover off uh, Greg and I didn't I didn't touch anything Justin I'll, I'll clear I didn't I just looked at it and I prayed and I prayed I went back to the children's room and all over the, the building and, and I prayed I prayed for myself I prayed for you I prayed for all who would be touched by this ministry as Vicki prayed uh, that God save those who who are out there and, and I prayed that we would catch that vision, that, that we would become a people concerned about the, the souls of those within earshot. If we go outside and, and yell, there's somebody who would hear our voice who is unsaved. So I prayed. I prayed for a long time. <clears throat> Stayed here about an hour. And I, I asked the question, I said, God, who is my neighbor? Because I was thinking about today. I was thinking about being here in this sermon. And uh, you don't ask God a question if you don't want an answer. Y'all know that? Don't ask him. If you don't want an answer, just don't ask him. And I stood up here and I said, God, who is my neighbor? And all of a sudden I became aware that there was somebody out there. Somebody at that column right there, that brick column. And it was a young man. And he was he was seated on a on his duffel. He had a full duffel, and he was sitting on the duffel with his head laid back against the the brick column. And he was asleep. I mean, I, I walked over and looked out the window just to make sure. He, I thought, surely to goodness, <clears throat> that's not somebody injured out there. Somebody beat up by by um, 
uh, 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 Damas I mean, uh, Jericho Road, a bunch of bandits, and I saw that, that it was a young man, and he was indeed asleep. So <clears throat> I want to be honest with you guys. I stayed a while longer because I thought, well, he's, he's out there waiting for somebody to come and pick him up. But he wasn't. He stayed there, and I'd been here for, <clears throat> for more than an hour, and I needed to leave. I needed to, I needed to get up and get out of here. And then I noticed the young man woke up, and he stood up, and he walked around for a while. And I thought, well, he, he's, he, whoever he's waiting on is coming for him, and he's going to leave. But he didn't. He left his, his duffel there, and he just walked around, and then finally he sat back down. So <clears throat> I unlocked the door and went out, and I, I went over to him, and I said, are you okay? And he, he looked up at me, and, and he, he grinned. He said, yeah, I'm, a, I'm okay. Um, I'm just hanging around here. I worked one of the business close nearby for yesterday, and, and I thought they were going to pay me. They were going to pay me in cash, and there's nobody there, and I'm just kind of hanging around. And I said, well, have you eaten? It was, it was after afternoon, and he said, no, <clears throat> no, I haven't eaten um, since I left Myrtle Beach. I've been down there, and I'm on my way back to... I think he said Bluefield, maybe. I'm on my way back home, and I had just stopped here and gotten some temporary work, hoping to get enough money to go on my way. And I had a, a McDonald's card in my car that I keep money on. It's just a convenience. It's a habit I have. So I went to my car and got that card, and it, it had a sizable balance on it. And I gave it to him, and I said, well, you can go down and, and get yourself something to eat. And he he was visibly, visibly touched. It was a small thing for me. I mean, my goodness, people, what a small thing to do, but a major thing for that young man. And I talked to him for a while, and <clears throat> then I got in my car and left. <clears throat> and what do you think I needed to do? I need to go to McDonald's and get me another card, <laughs> put more money on a card. So I would always have a, a McDonald's card with a balance on it in my car. And when I went down... Uh, the young man was there, and he, he approached me again. He said, you have no idea what that means to me, just for somebody to be kind. Um, I saw God. I saw my neighbor. God answered, who is my neighbor, by showing me that young man. So I asked God again, who is my neighbor? And I went to the farmer's market yesterday, I, I like to go there early on Saturday mornings and buy homemade sourdough bread by one of the vendors there. I, 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 it's just a habit. I just love to go and, and be in the, the market atmosphere that's, that's there at the farmer's market. So I, I went, and I, I, as I went in, I bought some corn from the, from the uh, farmer that was selling corn there and went on in and I noticed a man standing over to my left who was uh, standing out apart from everybody else and he had his Bible <coughs> and he was reading. He didn't appear to be a street preacher, but he was just a man standing there reading from his Bible. <coughs> Excuse me. So I went on and made, made my purchase and I was coming back through and I, I walked over to this man. He was still standing there and he was still reading his scripture and I said, uh, what are you reading? And he he was surprised that somebody stopped to speak to him, I think. And he, he showed me his Bible. He was reading from Romans 8. And this was what he was reading. He read it to me. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving us his son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the Spirit. Now, everybody else was walking around this man, avoiding him. But as he read to me, I stood there with tears 
streaming down my face because it's part of today's sermon. There is no condemnation. We are forgiven. We cannot live under the law as the young attorney, the young lawyer that, that questioned Jesus, that was trying to question Jesus, the one who was trying to keep the law. The, the two who passed by the man left for dead on the road to Jericho, the Jew that was beat up and left for dead, the two that passed him by in order to fulfill the requirements of the law. Romans says there is no condemnation for us who are believers in Christ Jesus. It was a part of my sermon today, and I saw God in this man who was my neighbor. As I talked to him, I, I found out that where he went to church, and he told him where I go to church, and, and found out that he was a neighbor to some of our Pleasant View folks. Truly, truly, I met one of my neighbors yesterday. And finally, I said, God, who is my neighbor? And last night, after a, a Belize team meeting that we had at church, and, and everybody was gone, I was the last one to leave the building, as I typically am, going out the east side of the building. I locked the door and started for my car, and a car pulled up, a car that I'd never seen before, and a young man hopped out. He had on a, <coughs> a fluorescent yellow T-shirt, bright yellow you could have seen him in the dark and it was not <clears throat> it was not yet quite dark um, but he he ran over to me and he said I rang the doorbell out there like the sign said but nobody came there were cars on the on the west side of the parking lot because uh, a group of folks had taken the bus and, and made a trip last night and he said nobody was there and um I said, well, that's because there's nobody in the building. I'm, I'm the only one, and I'm just now, I'm just now leaving. Um, so I got to see God again in this young man, in this uh, serendipity. Of, of just uh, God does that. He, he just gives you serendipities when you ask. And I had asked. I was, I was, it was, it was, I was the one who asked for it. So this young man said. Well, my wife just kicked me out. He said, I went home, and the door, the door had a new padlock on it, and my clothes were sitting outside, and I don't have any place to go. And he said, I've got a friend here who's going to drive me to my, to my folks up in Smith County, but he wants money for gas. He, he, he can't afford to drive me there. And I said, well, there's no money in the building. Um, you know, I, but I had some money. I had $15 in my in my pocket and I said I've got $15 would that help he said $10 would buy enough gas to get me there so I gave him the $15 that I had on my person and, and he was incredulously happy with, with $15 and I thought my goodness Barbara he'd go out to eat and, and spend that much God showed me my neighbor in the face of a young man who had been kicked out of his house sometime back I confided to a colleague of mine, a preacher friend that uh, he and I he and I share um, theological uh, issues, but we also share our lives with each other. And I had confided to him that I had been assigned to work with a person that that I really had a serious personality conflict with. I'd been assigned to, to work on a task with a woman that. She and I just really did not like each other. I didn't like her. She didn't like me. Y'all have anybody in your life like that? Somebody that you just conflict with. They're your sister, and you love them in Christ, but really, you just have trouble getting along with them. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Am I the only one in this room that's honest? <laughs> I think we all know. We know what I'm talking about. So I said, I, I just, I really, really am having, to, I having a struggle with this. And he said, well, Barbara, this is what I'm going to tell you to do. Just go do the Jesus thing. And now that's my message to you. I want you to go do the Jesus thing. I want you to go look for, for your neighbor. And I want you to ask God, who is my neighbor? And then ask him, okay, when I meet my neighbor, what is it you want me to do? What are your instructions for me? just to sit and talk to somebody who's lonely, 
to approach a stranger and say, are you okay? You know, that's hard to do. It, it's hard for, for, for more reason than one. One reason is we don't really want to know. Are you okay? There are times when we just are so busy, we just really don't want to take the time to hear, are you okay? I know that you're not, or you wouldn't be sitting there leaned up against a, a brick wall asleep. But it's the God thing. And Jesus says, <laughs> the neighbor is the one you have the most difficulty getting along with sometimes. The neighbor is the one that you have a personality conflict with. And it's sometimes the neighbor needs money. Sometimes the neighbor needs food. Sometimes the neighbor just needs a hug. You know, there are times in my life I just need a hug. So my question to you is, who is your neighbor? And what are you going to do about it? Pray with me. Father, it's a, it's a question you pose to each one of us. And, um, and you don't make it easy. You, you tell us to go do the Jesus thing. And it's a hard thing. So I pray for my brothers and sisters in this room today that we would honestly come and ask you, show me my neighbor, and then you would show us what to do about it. In the mighty, powerful name of Jesus, amen. Well, Barbara, thank you for that this morning. Yeah. I know I feel a little uncomfortable today. Anybody else feel a little uncomfortable after that? <laughs> Nothing like a little challenge at church, and uh, that's what we—that's what we need. Sam would call that a kick in the butt, <laughs> wouldn't you, Sam? So uh, we're grateful for that this morning. I think we all are. So, won't you stand with us, and uh, we're going to talk about how he rescues us. There you were in the shadows, holding out your hand. You met me there. Where would I be without you? Where would I be, Jesus? You were the voice in the desert, calling me out in the dead of night. Fighting my battles for me, you are my rescue story, lifting me up from the ashes, bearing my soul from death to life, bringing me from glory to glory. You are my rescue story, you are, you are. You are my rescue story, you are, you are. in the pages before I had a name before I needed grace singing songs of redemption every time I ran away you were louder than my shame where would I be without you where would I be Jesus, you were the voice in the desert, got me out in the dead of night, finding my battles for me. You were my rescue story, lifting me up from the ashes, bearing my soul from death to life, bringing me from glory to glory. You were my rescue story, you never gave up on me. 
You never gave up on me. You're my testimony. You never gave up on me. You never gave up on me. You're my testimony. Oh, you never gave up on me. You never gave up on me. Isn't my testimony? You were the voice in the desert. You got me out in the dead of night. Fighting my battles for me. You were my rescue story. Lifting me up from the ashes. You gave my soul from death to life. Bringing me from glory to glory. You were my rescue story. You are, you are. Oh, you never gave up on me. You are, you are. This is my rescue story. You are, you are. Oh, you never gave up on me. You are, you are. This is my rescue story. And now, my friends, as I've challenged you to look for your neighbor and then ask God what he wants you to do about it, I pray that he would make his face to shine upon you this whole week and be gracious to you, that he would lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Go in peace, my friends, in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are, you are. This is my rescue story. You are, 